quarterly item, Mr. Bill Justice. Uh, on this day of celebration, celebration of new life, and celebration of life that has been shared with us through the gift of the Irish. This time of year, in our liturgies and our prayers, we hear a lot of the word repent. Repent of your sins and so on. And Watch the sometimes I think uh, that word is kind of like, oh, all right, what does that mean? We, we hear it a lot on the preachers on television huh? and, 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 uh, and, and the radio and so on. Repent, my friends. Repent, change your heart, your way of living. And so, okay, yeah, but repent, but I mean, we just have to change everything or what? And so much of the literature of Lent tells us that. This is a time of repentance. And it's all true. But what really does repent mean? And I think what it means and, and it can help us to see is re there's a sense in repent in the scriptures of not, you know, you're horrible and you should be, you know, thrown into the, in, in, into the, uh, uh, the bay if you don't do this. But it's a time of change. A time to to look and see where one needs to to change one's way of living, whether it's great or small or middle or whatever, and begin the process. There is another word uh, in Greek that is used for repent, and it's it's a word metanoia, which means to change the direction you're going in. So if you're going this way, and that's not the best way. Then you change and you go this way. So that's another way of looking at repentance. It's a change of the direction of our lives. And again, whether it has to be a full change or a medium change or whatever, we have to figure that out with God. But repentance then isn't a horrible word. It's nothing to be afraid of. In fact, it gives us the opportunity. It is a challenge that can free us and give us hope. Wow, good things can happen to us if we change, if we repent. Mm. Now we notice that in our first reading today, it, it, Moses, huh? You know, Moses is going along, he's a, a shepherd, he's got out of Egypt and, with, with his life and so on, and, and he, he all of a sudden sees this bush that's on fire, but it's not burning. And he had a good curiosity. I think any of us would if we saw a bush that was burning but wasn't really being consumed. And he goes over it and he looks at it and all of a sudden he hears this voice saying, take your shoes off, this is holy ground. You know, he doesn't get, he gets a little nervous. What's this? And as they have the dialogue, and this is amazing, this is God speaking to a human being, huh? Now that would frighten any of us, but in those days they had no understanding that that could happen. And so it, it, it says, what? The curiosity then gets into a conversation with God, and God says, don't be afraid, even though uh, Moses is very afraid. Huh? He's talking to God, he might die. But then the message comes. The message is, let my people go. I am calling you to bring freedom, to help turn around Pharaoh to help my people know that there's another way besides slavery to live, that there's a way of freedom, of hope, of life, and of justice. And that's the challenge that God gives Moses. And Moses could, Moses could stay in his own path, but he doesn't. He turns around, he repents in a sense, and there's conversion, and he goes and sees Pharaoh, and as we say, the rest is history. It is a great challenge he was given, and it will change not only his people, but Moses himself. When he experiences metanoia or change, it changes him and the people he works with and loves and cares. A conversion to the Lord. As we heard some after our first reading, he pardons all your iniquities, he heals all your ills, he is merciful and gracious slow to anger. Like Moses, he calls us this season to hope and life. But our second reading is very important because St. Paul tells us that guess what? We can't do this alone. 
it's not, you know, uh, um, what do you call it, an Eagle Scout process, huh? To become an Eagle Scout in the Boy Scouts. You check off all these things you do, and then by gosh, you'll be an Eagle Scout. No, we cannot do it alone. Just like you can't get down here alone, many of you, huh? You know, all the volunteers come and help you, but they come and you're here. And that's why we're here, because we love you. Well, guess who's the pushing of our own wheelchairs, whether we really got one or a walker or we, we can walk still? It's Jesus Christ. When Paul tells us that in the desert, when Moses tapped the rock and water came and saved the people's lives, Jesus is really the rock. And we need to let him walk with us and know he wants to walk with us. And then we can change. Without him, nothing. It's not, you know, 24 hour knotless. We go in and, and work hard and we can repent. But with Jesus, he's there. He loves us. He calls us. The final thing, though, is if we say yes to that, if we let Jesus into our lives, then the challenge is we need to help other people see that Jesus is there. We need to help other people to say yes to the Lord. As I mentioned in the beginning, today in our churches, those who are going to be baptized and confirmed and receive First Communion at Easter are invited today to hear about the living waters, the waters of baptism that will help them and say yes to that change. And we who are walking or wheeling or whatever our journey of Lent are going to be asked at Easter, do we still believe in Jesus? Yes. Good. Yes. Do we still believe in God the Father? Yes. The Holy Spirit? Yes. Well, great, because they are the rock. Jesus is the rock that will help us to change, to make that conversion. And that we will be instruments of his peace. Today we're remembering St. Patrick, huh? a man who, who uh, was a, 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 a slave in, in Ireland, a, a, a Britisher, but he began, a Roman actually, better said, and he, he began to like these people. And so when he went, he was escaped, he went back to, to Br uh, British uh, 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 Britain, was England then, and he wanted to come back to share this hope in Jesus. And he did so. And that faith and that pride has it, it, it enlivened the Irish people for all these centuries and have reached out to search for freedom too, to make a change, to sometimes have to leave their own country as my grandparents did, in order to have a life that they felt was for their children, and have come to share that hope, that dream, with us in our city here. And so when we celebrate Irish, when we celebrate St. Patrick, what we're really celebrating is the deep faith of a people that has seen the possibility that in change, sometimes dramatic, sometimes not really wanting, like being on the prison ships to Australia. But what? Can change people's lives and bring hope to the next generations. To repent is not something to be afraid of. It is to embrace the presence of Jesus that calls us to life, to hope, to trust, to service, and to one day be with him.